it turns out that it was the Kelly Pond that you do not talk of a man and a wife separately. And the woman who is in charge, more or less, of the Kelly House said, Eliza's Pond, you can't do that, you have to call it the Kelly Pond. And I said, but it's my privilege to name my own prince. And so I came back to see if maybe it was Eliza and Daisy, who were two sisters. And Daisy lives next door to the McCallum House, and Eliza lived here. And then I decided, oh, hell. Then she called up and said, you could name it the pond. Well, <laughs> I don't want to name it the pond. color are you going to do next? <gasps> this is going to be low keyed and foggy, so it probably won't get out of the range, and rather I use um, dry grass or bright green grass. We've never had bright green grass. Do you notice the hills as you drove up? The lambs are out, everything's happening. We have hardly ever had green grass on those hills until February. This year is an amazingly wet year for those areas. Now, what did you ask me? And I didn't answer it. What color you would be? Yeah, I don't know. That's what I suspect a pretty low key, but it'll be darker. Anne Kendallfoot is a printmaker and teacher. She has explored, helped to develop, and encouraged the use of serigraphy or silkscreen printmaking as an artistic medium since its earliest days. Stencil making is the heart of the process, and there are almost unlimited ways of affixing stencils to the screen. But it was a day when the water was real white and flourishing along the other side of the bay, and it looked so pretty. For making this particular print, Anne has chosen two different kinds of stencils. First, she has transposed a brush line copy of her original drawing to a screen via a special photo process. Then, using prints from the first stencil, she planned and made several more stencils of cut paper. Screen print is really an educated stencil. That's what it is. Is it educated me? Or the piece of paper, I'm not quite sure. I start bringing out the background as light, uh -huh. and then I'll keep adding to this until it's dark and comes forward. It's easier to do that than try and make it the same depth. And there's something more subtle about layering colors than there is in just putting on that color that you want when you're finished. not working in her studio, her days are filled with getting her completed additions to the Mendocino Art Gallery, getting ready for teaching commitments, and shows in other places. In 1983, President Kennedy of Stanford University made a special request to have a group of her works hanging in his office. Because she enjoys sharing her time and expertise with other artists, Mendocino conservation efforts, and friends, it is sometimes hard to get back to her silk screens. Anne first explored silk screen printing at the University of Wisconsin while working as the gallery workshop director at the first student union during its pioneering days. How did you get involved with Norwegian design? We wanted to learn. <laughs> we wanted to learn how to silkscreen. The first thing that I came 
when I came into the job, I found that what they were trying to do was get a lot of the load off the art department because everybody wanted posters. You know how they call the high school art department to make posters for things or the college art department for things. So what would we do? So the Rockefeller Foundation gave us a grant to go around the state. They would not pay for the book, but they would, or for the learning, but they would pay for our collecting. And we had one yard of silk, so we had four screens, and we had two cameras, and I took a Norwegian girl with me, and my Studebaker only broke down completely once. And we couldn't get very far, but we went to the museums and to knowledgeable people about the different kinds of nationality groups in the state. But they were all very nice and, and hunted for things for us, and we took hundreds of pictures and filed them, wrote all the information on them, and put together. A, my first silkscreen efforts, we learned on 15 pages. I'd seen the French books of design done by screen printing, and uh, this is what we thought we would do, and we learned. Of course, the paint in those days got hard on the top, and you had to strain it. Ugh. <laughs> And I remember a particular blue would bleed. No matter what you did, it would out on the paper. And then we'd run out of paper, and we'd have to try and get some more paper and so on. But we sold all 500 copies of Norwegian design before they were, we didn't finish printing them. But I can remember the day that Elaine and I put two colors on top of each other and came up with a third. <gasps> it was so exciting. They were transparent. Yeah. yeah. They weren't really, but that one was but transparent enough work, to that, show, yeah, to and show. we began to wonder what else we could do. Anne has taught art from slum schools in Washington, D.C. during the Depression to the graduate level at the University of Wisconsin. She had a silkscreen class at the College of San Mateo for 25 years and still teaches occasional classes at Mendocino and Modesto. This summer, she traveled in her Volkswagen bus with her good friend and traveling companion to the Arrowmont School of Arts and Crafts in Tennessee to give an elder hostel course. My students have taught me such an incredible amount. At the end of every time I've taught, I lay the things out on the table and look at them, and it's amazing what a teacher can learn. But what happens that is good as a learning process has come through just by specific assignments that have produced very unusual ways of developing each individual. I think that what people need more than anything is to understand that they are such individuals and that they can do anything that they would like to try to do. The screen almost does it for them.